County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Roll call, please. Carter? Here. Matos Castillo? Here. McGuire? Here. Ortega? Hi. Reinhardt? Here. McDonough? Here. We'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Quick announcement here before we get into approvals. Commissioner Huffman is not feeling well. He's staying home to take care of himself and hopefully not pass it along to <laughs> anybody he comes into contact. So, all right, first item is to approve the agenda for April 12th, please. So moved. Motion in a second. Roll call. Maris Castillo? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Ortega? Aye. Reinhardt? Aye. Carter? Yes. McDonough? Aye. Next item is to approve the minutes from March 26th, please. So moved. Second. No motion is second. Any corrections, additions? Roll call. Maris Castillo? Yes. McGuire? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Reinhardt? Aye. Carter? Yes. McDonough? Aye. Commissioner McGuire, you get to kick off our uh, no, public I'm health so awards excited. here with a proclamation. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm excited to be joined by Deputy County Manager Paul Allwood and Public Health Director Ann Berry. And I am very excited and honored to be presenting this proclamation during Public Health Week. Uh, as we all know, uh, we can't do any, anything uh, in our county without it, it touching health in some way. And I know that we have a health in all policies uh, policy, and uh, it's a, a pleasure to be recognizing this week when, while we know that we do this every day uh, of the year. But uh, I will uh, read the proclamation. Whereas Ramsey County is committed to strengthening individual, family, and community health, safety, and well-being, and whereas a public health approach utilizing community partnerships focused on prevention and upstream work is vital for sustaining and improving community health, and whereas the week of April 1st through 7th, 2019, is designated as National Public Health Week with the theme of creating the healthiest nation for science, for action, for health. And whereas, despite public health improvements in the last century, Americans today live shorter lives, suffer more health issues, and experience greater health disparities than people in other high-income countries. And whereas it is all of our responsibilities to ensure everyone has the opportunity for a long and healthy life through addressing the social, political, and environmental factors that impact our health. And whereas St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health is committed to engaging the community and building partnerships with the goal of advancing health and racial equity. Now, therefore be it proclaimed, the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners declares April 1st through 7th 2019 as Public Health Week in Ramsey County, and be it further proclaimed that the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners is proud to commend public health, other partnering county staff, as well as individuals and community organizations for their work to support healthy people, communities, and environments in Ramsey County. Thank you so much. Here's the uh, proclamation. I know I'm handing it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, here, I think one of you should be. <laughs> okay. One of you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good job. Paul? <clears throat> good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure as Deputy County Manager for the Health and Wellness Service team to just offer a few uh, brief remarks uh, to sort of uh, mark this very special occasion. Um, as I look around the room, I, I, I see very many of my, my former co colleagues from the Department of Health, 
And, uh, you know, it just reminds me that public health is about partnership at state, local, and um, national levels. And, and most importantly, that we need community partners in order to ensure that we have a strong public health system. Um, I'd like to just, you know, say that you know, public health still upholds the, the value and the, the important principle that everyone has a right to a long life and to be healthy and to live in communities that are safe, where there are, uh, are opportunities for everyone to be, to be properly educated, to live in adequate housing, to be free from violence, and to have the opportunity to earn you know, a good income. Um, in order for us to achieve that, we do need partnerships. And I think you know, as we learn more about the awards that will be given out today, we'll see that there are community members in Ramsey County who are stepping forward to help us to, to achieve that vision. And um, you know, I'm really very proud to welcome all of the, the awardees to the public health family of Minnesota. I think it's really important. That's why we are a strong state for public health because we do value and um, appreciate and promote partnership at every level to ensure that we get the job done. So I wanna say thanks to everyone that um, you know, has contributed to making public health special in Minnesota to the board for uh, taking, uh, taking time to mark this very important time in our history, and um, to everyone here, and, and also to our wonderful public health staff. <laughs> I almost forgot. And, um, you know, directed by, by Ann Barry, who is a, a legend uh, in public health. And um, thank you so much. I'll turn it over to Ann. Paul, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Paul. And now we'll hear oh, from the legend. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to follow. So. Um, <laughs> Good morning, and I want to start by thanking all of our award winners. Um, you represent the best in public health partnerships and the work that happens in the community. Um, I'm so pleased that you are here today so that you can be recognized for the work that you're doing. Um, we're, like I said, we're grateful for everything you do to work together, to work in your communities, and both protect and promote the health of people who live in Ramsey County. So thank you very much. Um, we don't do this work alone. Paul, Paul talked about the partnerships and the work we do with community. I want to emphasize that again. We don't do it alone. We do it with you, um, at the, as Paul said, at the state and local level, and particularly with communities. So thank you again. And finally, I'd like to thank all of you commissioners for taking time in your schedule this morning to recognize people. We're going to hear more about the work that's done here. But when you look at the people who are honoring today, there's, we're doing work in the area of protecting the community from tuberculosis, to uh, protecting the community from lead, sexual violence, and finally healthy eating and active, active living. So, I mean, it really covers the span of the work we do and how it touches our lives every day. So no better time to do this during National Public Health Week. And again, thank you for taking the time to do this this morning. Thank you Thanks, so much. Anne. Thank you. So we have four uh, recognitions that we'll be doing. We'll have a commissioner do each one. When we call you up, bring everybody who came to support and celebrate with you today, your team members, anybody's here. The first one is Commissioner Reinhardt in the East Side Neighborhood Development Company. So John, you and your folks, come on up. Don't be shy. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. And I have to tell you, uh, Commissioner Modis Castillo was commenting on the number of people here and the awards. And what we all know is the days that we can recognize our staff and the people in our community, the partners that we have, is one of the most joyous days that we have here. Um, and today it is about public health, and so I'm very excited to be here to present the first award. It is to the East Side Neighborhood Development Company. And it is a subject that is near and dear to my heart, um, being on the Clean Water Council and knowing uh, just how important it is to reduce the toxicity of what uh, we breathe and what we drink um, is so incredibly important. So this one is about uh, the toxicity of lead and the work that you're doing there. Um, so I will read what has been prepared for me here. <laughs> To the best of my ability, anyhow, I kind of go off on tangents. <laughs> Although the toxicity of lead has been known for many years, it remains one of the most common environmental hazards for children. In 2017, 
after 10 years of partnering with St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health led on lead window replacement, the Eastside Neighborhood Development Company launched, launched the Lead Safe Minnesota Initiative. This three-year project has the goal of reducing the rate of child lead poisoning to as close to zero as possible in three Eastside census tracts that are hot spots for lead exposure. And I'll explain that a little bit more as we go along here. Working with public health, Eastside in the last two years completed 131 lead window replacement projects in homes of, with 318 children. That's pretty amazing. The replacements were in neighborhoods with high concentration of poverty, older housing stock, and many rental units, all factors that create the barriers to reduce child lead poisonings. And those are what, is, what are considered the hot spots, and, and we do those, again, through the census tracts. Through collaboration with state and local public health, St. Catharines University and other partners, Eastside has been able to increase its capacity and expand resources in child lead poisoning hotspots. Eastside and lead, lead Safe Minnesota partners are on track to achieve their goals and move child lead poisoning from a reactive response to a proactive prevention-based public health approach. And I wanna repeat that because it is so important. People, um, when you're going about your normal lives, you're not necessarily thinking about what's around you day in and day out. And in these areas where there is lead paint, um, window, uh, generally around windows and other places as well. Um, and you know, for people that are listening to this that may not understand why that's important is because especially with children, anybody that has been around a child at all knows that the hands go everywhere and then they go in their mouth. And that's where the lead paint and the dust and the chipped paint that comes off of the windows, um, they ingest it and they get lead poisoning. So that's why um, this is so important and to not be reactive, but to really uh, be proactive and raise awareness about it. The work started here in Ramsey County and is also being taken to a new level. Lead Safe Minnesota is working to form a statewide coalition to get resources, resources to similarly reduce child lead poisoning in 35 other census tracts track hotspots in low-income, diverse, urban, and rural communities throughout the state. And this is a statewide issue. I know in the um, northeast um, area of, of the state of Minnesota, there's a lot of hotspots regarding lead. In recognition of the potential of these partnerships, the National Green and Healthy Homes Initiative last year named Eastside as one of seven Catalyst Award winners nationwide. Pretty amazing. <laughs> um, John Vaughn, Executive Director of Eastside Neighborhood Development Company, is here to accept the award. And I just want to say congratulations from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Welcome, Chair, John. Chair McDonough, Commissioners, um, I'd like to introduce my team to you. Um, Housing Program Manager, uh, Sheila Connolly, who does the uh, window projects, and our three public health educators, Laura Clauser, Jennifer Beckenbach, and Alejandro Peralta Reyes. So, I say hello. And I'd right. like... <laughs> and I'd like to also uh, recognize um, the best public partner you could ever have, Jim Yannarelli and uh, his team, so. <laughs> and that's all. Thank you all right. very much. You can take a picture. Don't go away. Okay. Group up and, and so we yep, we'll get a picture. Jack, you a group here? And yeah, Jim, get in the picture. Uh, okay. Here? All right. Okay, wait a minute. I'm just standing like totally by myself out here. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations and good work. Our next awardee will be the Hmong Tuberculosis Advisory Council, and that will be presented by Commissioner Ortega. So come on up for the Hmong TB Advisory Council, all the folks that are here for that.
Good morning. The Hmong TB Advisory Council began work in the spring of 2018 in response to an ongoing outbreak of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis <laughs> among Hmong Americans in Ramsey County. The council, formed by the St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health and the Minnesota Department of Health, include Hmong American leaders in clinic systems, hospitals, and other community-based organizations, all of whom have a strong interest in improving awareness of TB and stopping its transmission. At monthly meetings, the council identified crucial audiences to target for outreach, help to develop a better understanding of why Hmong elders may be reluctant to seek care and craft it new messaging that better resonates with the community. The council has also been an advocate for legislation to better protect seniors in the future from exposure to TB. A total of 19 cases of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis has been identified in Ramsey County, County with a disproportionate impact on, among Americans. Each patient requires prolonged medical and extensive support during treatment that can last several years. The members of the TB Advisory Councils have played a crucial role in the response to this outbreak by helping public health engage the community and develop more effective strategies. Their knowledge and expertise will help us go far to reduce the spread of this de uh, deadly disease. And I have here Dr. Lowe and B. Wu, and would you care to say a few words? Dr. Lowe. Welcome. Thank you, uh, the chair and other commissioners. Um, I, um, I thank you for the, uh, recognizing our work together. This is really a, a wonderful collaboration. If you look at all of the members here, uh, we come from different um, professional backgrounds, different ethnicity, but our, our, our love for the community and just uh, taking care of our community is what brings us together. And uh, I actually grew up in St. Paul, <laughs> and then uh, grew up in Ramsey County, and it's, I'm currently a family physician at Eastside Family Clinic. So living here, taking care of my community is what brought me back here. Believe me, I tried to get away from Minnesota, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I came back here. And I'm sure that's true of all of our uh, members here. We are from different uh, professionals, and I don't even remember everybody's name, but I know that we work together. And uh, thank you for recognizing our effort, and we look forward to your continued support. Okay. Thank you for the partnership. We'll have to squeeze in tight. And I know we got a couple of Ramsey County staff here. Could you guys just raise your hand so we know? Um, who are working with this group. Yep, all. Yep, thank you. Thanks for your work, and thank you for the partnership and the results we're getting in the community. It means a lot. All right. Our next uh, awardee will be Como High School student, Desal Mu, uh, Commissioner Mattis Castile. Come on up, folks. And remember, these boys are on spring break, and here they are at 9 o'clock in the morning. So they get extra. And as a soccer mom, this gives me extra excitement. <laughs> While some people his age are at home playing video games, Diesel Mu volunteers his time twice a week to help youth get active and make healthy choices. Diesel, a sophomore at Como High School who plays on the varsity soccer team, has volunteered for the past two years as an assistant soccer coach at Sejong Academy, a charter middle school he attended. He not only helps coach and assist at games, but also mentors younger students about healthy choices involving exercise, food, and teen issues. The students Mu helps are English language learners, refugees from Burma and Thailand. 
many of whom cannot afford fees or manage transportation to play club sports. Through his volunteering, Mu is helping youth who otherwise cannot afford get access to sports. On behalf of the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners, congratulations, Diesel, and thank you for your work mentoring young children. Yeah. Would you like to say a few words, yeah. or? Yeah. Nope, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, you can say a couple. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I am honored to get this award. I enjoy volunteering and helping uh, Korean youth. Um, I will keep helping as much as I can because I love soccer and sharing my talent with other people. And I want to thank uh, my coach, my teammate, uh, my, my mom, and my teacher to come show up and support me. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you all for coming. All right, our next award will go to Tamara Stark, and that will be presented by Commissioner Carta. And Tamara, come on up. And anybody who came along, yes. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, you know that Ramsey County has a vision of a vibrant community where all are valued and thrive. And of course, at the center of that vision, genuine community engagement toward our strive for health and racial equity is critical. So this award is given to someone who has been at the center of helping us achieve that work. Is it Tamara or Tamara? It is Tamara, great. Didn't want to pronounce that wrong. So Tamara Stark is the chair of the county's violence prevention action team. And for the last three years, she's provided leadership on equity issues and empowered youth and adults who have been affected by violence. Through her leadership, the action team has held numerous learning sessions to expand solutions to public health problems, including youth incarceration, historical trauma in the African American community, health disparities, healing from trauma, and models for youth violence prevention. Tamara's contributions and guidance have been crucial to the county's health equity data analysis, public health's community health assessment, and the action teams Safe Places for Braver Voices Report. Her collaborative approach has fostered multiple community partnerships to provide training and skill development for many individuals and organizations who are working to prevent violence. Her colleagues from the Violence Prevention Action Team describe her as a gifted, hardworking community connector who grounds every interaction in compassion and inclusion. They say that when you work with Tamar, Tamara, <laughs> I'm sorry. They say that when you work with Tamara, you feel valued and heard. So on behalf of the county board, I would like to thank you, Tamara, for using your voice to help us advance racial and health equity in Ramsey County. Thank you so very much. Welcome. Chair, thank you, Chair McDonough, members. Thank you so much. It's an honor, this award and the work. I'm just so humbled. I have Darlene Simmons and Grit Youngquist here as well. And just our work centering on people often not heard and most directly impacted by some of the biggest challenges faced in the county and the cre creative solutions that are brought to the table by people often not at the table. The power to bring together, keep driving forward to see and witness transformative change is, is just delightful. So I thank you all, everyone here today. We couldn't do it without the great partnerships and creative solutions you allow us to have happen. Thank you. We'll get everybody together for a picture.
So I know this isn't going to be the easiest, but Diesel, if you and your folks could come over here, let's get a group picture of all the awardees and their one big picture here to show the strength we had and the partnership we have in Ramsey County. Um, we'll have to, we'll do it right here where all you folks are, so you can stand up and get tight, and then we'll get Diesel and his folks over here, and we'll get a nice, uh, a nice picture of everybody. And if you have a phone and you'd like someone to take a picture for you, we can get that up to Jackie. Jackie could take a picture for you. So this is everybody. So we do a pyramid. Yeah. yeah. The whole group. Jim, you going to get into the photography business? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I've been working with Jackie. She's been giving me lessons. Jim, can we go be in the kitchen? Oh, what a good group. Yeah, people should get What a partnership. Thank you. I need to see those faces back there. There are a couple of people who are hiding. <laughs> If you can't see the there camera, you won't be there in the picture. There, perfect. Thank you. All right. Thanks to all the awardees, and thank you for the partnership. You make Ramsey County stronger, and we appreciate all your work. to the administrative items here. <coughs> and Commissioner Mattis Castile, you'll have those, but I would like to just pull number nine and then um, if you could yep. uh, move through the items, please. Yep. Uh, Chair, I'd like to move uh, item number six, seven, eight, and 10. Second. We have motion and a second. Roll call. Maz Castillo? Yes. McGuire? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Reinhardt? Aye. Carter? Yes. McDonough? Aye. Number nine is legal action to move the Rice Creek Commons project forward. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have motion in a second. Commissioner Ortega? Excuse me. Any comments? Oh, on number nine? You've been nine. our lead on this. I'm going yes. to turn it over to you. Here. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, uh, Excuse me, I was, uh, my mind was somewhere else for a minute. Yep, no worries. Uh, well, I, I think uh, it's been kind of a lot of press on this. <laughs> uh, but as, you know, several years ago, uh, about nine years now, I believe, we decided to make a, a to move forward on the, uh, on the uh, TCAP uh, Rice Creek Commons projects, which is the former ammunition plant, which was the largest super site uh, uh, fund site in the, in the state, 425 acres of polluted land. And the county being pretty much a fully developed county uh, with uh, green space that we value very highly, uh, we move forward across the county, not just with this site, but we, we have dozens of examples where we move forward to clean up polluted land for development and expanding our tax base. Uh, we have worked with, uh, with the city of Barton Hills uh, to try and move forward uh, over the last couple of years, and we've hit an impasse. And so at this point, uh, we are moving forward, hopefully, that we could have this issue mediated, and because uh, and, we're right at the cusp uh, of, of fully developing this, this property. It is ready to, to, to move for full development. We have interested uh, commercial vendors that want to come in. And um, this is just uh, the board's way of saying, let's move forward. Let's, let's come to a conclusion, a decision to move forward and get this project going. Good. Thank you. And before I call on the other commissioners here, I, do, I wanted <coughs> to make a couple comments to reinforce um, what Commissioner Ortega said. 
You know, we're really at a critical time here with this project. As Commissioner Ortega pointed out, we've been at this for a long time. We've made a number of investments, and the market conditions are really ripe for development. And um, funding deadlines, other things that are outside of our control are really pushing us to get this project up. Shovels in the ground, and it's been a, a, a real problem here. Negotiations for the master development agreement have stalled. Arden Hills has rejected our request for professional mediation, and then they rejected our request for voluntarily disillusioning, dissol dissolving the joint powers agreement. And so at this point, we feel this is really um, the Joint Powers um, Development Authority, which was started with good intentions, had done a lot of good work, has really reached a stage of dysfunction and is actually becoming the barrier to moving this project forward. I know a number of you will touch on areas that are really important, not only to this whole board, but each of you as ind individual commissioners, but density, affordable housing, financial contributions of all the parties are interrelated and they need to be negotiated as a whole, not piecemeal, and we've just done everything we possibly can to avoid getting to this day, but today, here we are, and we're ready to move this forward. So, Commissioner Reinhardt. Thank you. Well, we all know that Rice Creek Commons uh, required a catalytic investment to unlock the potential of that vacant, polluted land, and I remember being out there when um, we put about 40 million, Ramsey County put about $40 million into cleaning that up and getting it ready and being out there when we were there with the Pollution Control Agency and having it certified to residential standards, which we took that extra step as well to make sure that we could get the best use out of the land um, and for the environment. And no easy task and it was a great day to be out, to be able to be out there. Um, but we're also committed to the additional infrastructure needs that are out there um, to prepare the site for development. And we're ready to move forward, as we all know. The, the city of Arden Hills, obviously, um, is going to gain significantly with this investment. And yes, there are costs that come with that, but the benefit to the community um, taking the former largest Superfund site in the state of Minnesota and turning it into a development um, the, and, and doing so in an environmentally friendly way and some of the other things that we have um, put into place there is so critical. And I think that we can all agree that that's the best thing that we can do moving forward. Uh, and I think it's also important to note that when we talk about Ramsey County's investment, it's all the communities within Ramsey County that have contributed to the progress that's being made there on this project um, with the county being the lead investor. And we really need um, the, we need Arden Hills to put in their fair share because um, without doing that, the other communities in Ramsey County are at being asked to contribute more. And so it's, it's a partnership. And that was the idea behind the Joint Powers Agreement um, was the partnership in moving this forward and attaining uh, mutual goals and I know that it's, you know, in the newspaper, it looks like it's uh, just a couple of little things, but the fact is we've been working at this for a long time and our commissioners that have been involved with it have done a fantastic job. And so I think we just need to move forward and figure out how do we get this done. And in the end, it's gonna be best for Ramsey County and the city of Arden Hills as well. So I'm, you know, it's too bad that we got to this point, but at the same time, we have to make those steps forward and we couldn't just stay in the same spot and pretend that everything was okay because it isn't. Good, thank you. Commissioner Carter. Well, thank you very much. It's really important that we're taking action moving forward so that we can resolve the use of property which we've invested in over a long period of time uh, with taxpayer dollars so that we can actually see a development that benefits all. It's very, very important that this development, as it is a unique opportunity for us here in Ramsey County, reflects our vision of a vibrant community where all are valued and thrive. And this project today simply is a deal that actually would restrict access to housing options for decades to come, and that particularly for those who we know People of color in this region have a very, very difficult time accessing home ownership and sharing in the wealth of our region. 
So we can't uh, sustain a project that would limit that access. We have reflected on input from our community, such as we do in all of our work. And after that input and in reviewing the project, we know that this project with only 1,460 units of residential housing, and where only 10% of those are affordable at 80% of the area median income, simply does not match or align with our comprehensive plans for this county. Nor does it align with the draft comprehensive 2040 plan that Arden Hills has. So at this point, knowing that we can do better and insistent on doing better, we know that increasing the density of the Rice Creek Commons project is a way to improve the project, to ease the burden of public investment for all of us, and to at the same time increase affordable housing opportunities for all. So I'm thankful that we have an action before us today that will move us forward in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carr. Commissioner McGuire. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do support this. Um, I do support this motion. Uh, we do need to move this development forward. We need to advance the, the project. Uh, all the communities that surrounded, all, all the communities in Ramsey County understand that the benefit that this will have to our entire region. And they understand that we have our need for jobs, economic development, and affordable housing throughout the county and the region. So I do believe that we have a responsibility to our taxpayers, as, as has been mentioned, the huge investment we've already made, but we really need to advance this project so that we can get a return on, on that investment. And uh, we really need to, to maximize the, the property and um, the, the number of jobs and housing units that that, that that site can offer. So we really need to move this forward. Thank you. Commissioner yeah. Mattis Castile. I, I just want to thank all of you for this incredible work and how much work has gone up to this point. It, you know, being new to the board, um, I have seen how much work has gone into it and how much um, the community's input has really impacted our decision on where we move forward here. And, and really hearing the needs of our community is essential. And so I applaud you all as I'm coming, you know, new to this position, I, I've done my homework a little bit and done some reading. And just to follow up on the comments that uh, Commissioner Carter talked about, the 2040 comp plan, I just want to break that down so people really understand what that means, is that the Arden Hills uh, 2040 comp plan states that it will provide at least 373 units of housing between 2021 and 2030 at a range of affordability levels at or below 30%, 50%, and 80% of area median income. It also states that Rice Creek Commons, 239 units will be provided at 50% of area median income. But this directly contradicts the city's position of a maximum of 10% affordable at 80% of area median income at Rice Creek Commons. So there's a disconnect there. And, and just so that people understand what that means, 80% um, area median income translates to housing for families making $70,000 a year. This is above the average salary of all the area teachers, firefighters, police officers, and people who work in the restaurants and retail establishments throughout our county and in the surrounding area, as well as many seniors on fixed income. So the numbers aren't working in the current situation. And so, um, you know, I know, and we all know that if partners are interested in providing greater housing choices for people, we have to work together with real commitments. And so I applaud this work moving forward and support this Great. motion. Thank you. Thank you. Before I get to some closing comments, um, I had a nice conversation with Commissioner Huffman this morning, and even though he won't be listed as a EA on the official vote, he wanted me to communicate not only to you, but to the community that he strongly supports this. He's uh, sat on the Joint Development Authority Board since the inception with Commissioner Ortega, has been through this all, has worked extremely hard, as, as many of us has, to try to actually get to a, a, uh, an understanding and a way to move forward with the city. And he wanted me to um, communicate that he stands full-heartedly behind the action that we're taking today to move forward with a, um, a legal action here to uh, really try to get resolution to this. Also, I wanted to just take a moment. I look out here and I see Lee and Carrie and 
I know Josh and Joanna and Martha and Louis Jam Boy's not here, but each and every one of you have been nothing but stellar in trying to thread the needle here with this community. You've been professional. You represented us in a, a way of um, really validates that we are a county of excellence. You've always put your best foot forward working with that community, with the city, with the elected officials, with the staff, and really trying to come to a resolution and a compromise. And I know you've put your heart and your mind into this. And I don't want you to view this as a failure. I want you to view this, that this board is committed working with you, that we will have a project that will live on, will have a legacy and a long time impact in this community. And thanks for all your work. And a couple of us, a number of us in the comments have mentioned the community support here. I do want to recognize Russ Adams is here, strong advocate and been a strong partner. A lot of times he's holding us accountable at, and pointing figures at a lot of us. And a lot of times he's standing there with us to advance equity and advance of the issues and the values that are important. So Russ, I want to take a moment. And I don't know if there's any other community members that are here today, but there are a number that stand with Russ in holding us accountable to the commitment that we took the day we decided to make this investment. So thank you for that. And then just a couple of quick closing comments here. Given the city's unwillingness to engage in any meaningful compromise, regrettably, we will pursue legal action with this action. Rice Creek Commons can be a transformative development for our community. We have a responsibility to our taxpayers and to the region to advance this project into meaningful development. We will continue to push forward using all available options to ensure we deliver a project that matters to this community and to this region. So with that, we'll have a roll call on the action, please. Mas Castillo. Aye. McGuire? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Reinhardt? Aye. Carter? Yes. McDonough? Aye. Thanks to everybody for their work on this. Look forward to the day we can actually be at a groundbreaking and <laughs> celebration of investment to paying off for our, our whole county and our region office. All right, Commissioner McGuire, I think the legislature's still in session. We're still in session, uh, till May for sure. <laughs> We're gonna check every week, though, just in case you get the work that early and adjourn, yes. I don't know. Although they are taking next week off. I mean, they so, could do yeah. that, right? <laughs> yes, they're, they're giving them all next week off to uh, go to their home communities, talk to their constituents. Uh, the, the public is speaking loud and clear on many issues, so I think they're, uh, hopefully uh, listening to all of that. The omnibus bills are, are coming together and uh, yesterday the Ways and Means Committee uh, released the schedule the bills are gonna take up. So that's, um, they're gonna take up a few th this week before the break next week and then after that they'll be in full force. So our team of uh, Claudia Brewington and Jen Jennifer O'Rourke and Nick Riley continue to follow all of our all of our bills and um, they still are all in progress. That's a good, that's a good no, um, sign. Um, the Health and Human Services, Housing, Taxes, Transportation, Jobs, Environment and Natural Resources and Energy. We have issues that we're following in all of those committees. And so um, we just thank them for all of their work in tracking all of those. A couple of um, issues that um, we're really following. Um, the property tax bill still contains our 30 million in county program aid, so that's a good thing uh, that we uh, are getting ho hopefully 30 million and uh, the cities are getting 30 million, so that's still there, that's a good sign. And I know that there was a house transportation press conference to announce their bill this morning and I don't know if Commissioner McDonough wants to comment on that when I'm complete with my report. I will say that on Thursday, uh, Commissioner Carter and I and Jen Jennifer O'Rourke uh, spent Thursday at, uh, at the Capitol uh, just uh, talking to people, uh, taking them or calling them off the House floor just to, um, to talk to them about our issues. So just a few of the people that we were able to visit with, um, Car Representative Mariani, we talked to him about our Community Corrections Act funding that we're looking for, Commissioner or um, Representative Pinto, we could, we encouraged him and supported his work on early childhood, uh, Representative Loeffler on the tax tax committee, and um, so we saw many, many others, but it was a great afternoon of bringing, you know, awareness and just support for, for our issues with our legislators. So it's a, it's a good time to call them off the, off the House floor when they're in um, 
when they're in session because they were um, willing to come out and talk to us for a few minutes. So I just want to um, thank everyone for all of their work. And I know that so many of us have been um, down at the Capitol, uh, you know, working on our issues. And if anyone else wants to comment on, I, I know that there are a lot of bills got through uh, the, the, the next step and are still being considered for inclusion in the omnibus bills. So if anyone else wants to comment, I know Commissioner Carter was testifying on a bill too, so I welcome your um, comments on that. And then Commissioner McDonough, and any, any others? Any other legislative updates? Commissioner Carter. So I'll simply share that I did have the opportunity to, in Health and Human Services Finance, testify on HF 342, which is the African American Family Preservation and Child Welfare Disproportionality Act. Uh, I, uh, representing AMC, along with Commissioner Angela Conley, representing Hennepin, and uh, the Human Services Director from Stearns County, testified in support of the bill and the work that we are doing as AMC and MAXA, along with the legislators, to ensure that the bill is in a form which will advance child welfare and which counties can support and actually implement and of course, which the legislators are willing to move forward. So we are working over the next period of weeks with those legislators and hopefully also with DHS in the room along with our counties um, to ensure that that can happen. Uh, we anticipate something good happening for children in this session as a result of it. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other updates, Commissioner Reiner? Well, we are still spending a lot of time up there with different <laughs> deadlines happening. Yes. Um, and so uh, the carpet uh, recycling uh, legislation is moving forward and trying to uh, come up with uh, or address some of the issues that have been raised in the committee um, about access and about uh, timelines and so forth. And so Representative Hansen is, is doing a great job in trying to uh, bring that forward. Um, and to have more than, well, less than, I think it's 3% of the carpet in uh, the metropolitan area is actually recycled. 135,000 tons, I think it is, and 6,000 are actually um, recycled. So we can do better than that. And that's what this bill is meant to do and to have producer responsibility. Um, the emerald ash borer uh, continues. We continue to uh, testify on that and the importance of looking at that from a number of different perspectives. One is stopping the spread of emerald ash borer so that it doesn't get to our black ash forests in northern Minnesota. Um, and also, so what we need to do to prevent that from spreading, um, and also using uh, one way to deal with it, and probably about the only way to really deal with it, is through um, chipping it and using it as um, uh, an energy um, energy provider through district energy specifically, but there's, there's, people are not understanding just how big this problem is until we start talking about the numbers. And then finally, the TCE emission, um, the water gremlin emissions, um, the concerned citizens neighborhood group has formed, <laughs> and it's actually um, a, a nonprofit. Um, that has formed and is looking at not only what has happened there, but is helping uh, uh, revise or, or, or put forward legislation that Representative Amy Waslowick and Peter Fisher, uh, Senator Roger Chamberlain and uh, Senators Isaacson and Weger and others have been really working towards making things, help, helping to make things change as far as not only for this group moving forward, but for other potential um, emissions or environmental issues that arise in any neighborhood. So it's not just about them, and I give them a lot of credit for that. And in fact, we were, um, a group of us were meeting at, uh, from 6.30 to 9.30 on Friday night, trying to get language in place um, so that it really states what, what needs to be done. And so I'm feeling very good about that moving forward. But again, it's, it is about what happened in that neighborhood. But it, is, it has opened up the eyes of so many people on what happens in our communities, and most often we don't even realize it. 
So um, very happy to be a part of that and kudos to the neighborhood group. The amount of work that they are doing is absolutely amazing and just hunkering down and getting it done. Great, thank you. Real, I'll follow up a little bit more on the transportation bill as um, Commissioner McGuire um, mentioned. Um, Representative Lordstein is rolling out the House bill this morning. Um, I did sit in on a meeting on Friday that Representative Hordstein called with labor, business, community groups, engineers, cities, counties um, for, and it was still a works in progress, but clearly he's going to be much more robust in an investment in transit to help ensure that we've got a system that works for all in our community and is strongly connected. And then also the Senate Transportation Committee chaired by Senator Newman will be rolling out their bill later um, today, I believe. Um, it's going to be very, uh, no, no transit investment whatsoever from what we're hearing and uh, very slimmed down for revenue sources in there. So it'll be interesting to see the path here in the House and the Senate as we move forward on transportation investment. All right, um, we're going to move into county connections and board up updates, but I'm going to ask if, if everybody would keep it to like one because we've got an HRA meeting right. executive session. And I want to make sure we're not cutting out the workshop that uh, report back to us on the work we're doing and the talent traction and retention and diversity in our, diversifying our workforce, which is um, set to start at 1030. So, Ryan, you want to start? I know you probably got two pages mm -hmm. there, but I'll let you condense it down really quickly here so we can um, make sure we uh, do justice to the workshop. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I'll see your one and raise you one, but I'll go quick. Um, they're both really good updates. Um, By the time we get to the Goyer, she'll be all in. <laughs> so, see my two. so uh, late last fall, uh, late last fall, the county board took a second in a series of actions related to support for immigrant and refugee communities after some comprehensive work with public health and some policy setting work. You also allocated money to seek a federal funding match from the Vera Institute related to immigration defense support for individuals living in our community. Um, I would like to report back that we have received a $100,000 Catalyst match from the Vera Institute. I believe we are the only county in Minnesota to have received that. And I also don't want to just leave it at county. We partnered with the city of St. Paul in a way that I think was really also quite compelling. Two things that stood out. Our partnership with our capital city and our, tr our work to try and coordinate that work together, as well as our work to both comprehensively do the public health work, as well as the work on the immigration defense side. Vera called out both. I would also just want to call out the leadership we've had from our policy director, Elizabeth Tolzman, throughout this entire project. There's been a number of staff that have worked on it, and I want to say thank you to everybody, both in the county and our partners at the city as well. County Attorney Choi and his work on the side of immigration defense um, and thinking about the, the compounding impacts of immigration um, in, the, in the justice system. But uh, this work doesn't happen without Elizabeth's leadership, and it's a proud moment for Ramsey County. We look forward to giving you more updates about the immigrant refugee work as we head into this summer. And secondly, um, we were just selected, so this is all selection week for us. We found out that we were selected by the Center for Justice and Safety Finance. It's a federal group for a technical assistance related to a fines and fees project. We just a week ago did the interview on the phone, and it's one of those moments where you get no chance to prep with your team ahead of time, and yet it felt like we had really prepped it because this work is very meaningful to us. We both talked about previous work the county has already done around fines and fees and alleviating the impacts that has, particularly in communities of color and low-income communities in our region. Um, the Center for Justice and Safety Finance wrote about how impressed they were at both the fundamental way in which we want to approach this work and also our specific ask for technical assistance to identify where you start. It's hard to just do a blanket approach to this type of work. It's got to be methodical and thoughtful, but it'll be a part of our budget process. Huge shout out to our safety and justice partners, Corrections, uh, the courts, county attorney's office, and Zach Hilton in the policy and planning shop for pulling it all together. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Congratulations and good work to everybody.
Commissioner Mattis Castile. Yeah, so I just want to do a quick reminder then, since we only have one thing, Northland Cup hockey game yeah. is this weekend. <laughs> um, it is Saturday. I am excited to take the helm from Commissioner Reinhardt as the coach this year. <laughs> I will be taking all hockey coaching tips uh, on the side since I actually. I, I did tell you. Yes, I open, close the door. Um, but it's Saturday, and this is really important because it is a benefit to raise money for the St. Paul and Ramsey County domestic abuse prevention program which is often the first access point for someone fleeing domestic violence so incredibly important we're gonna have a little fun to raise money for this great cause so starting at noon it's free and open to the public with some great events and silent auctions thank you Commissioner Reinhardt okay I'll make my one announce I have one announcement but I also have um, what we have done so I'll put it all in one sentence we all count census kickoff yesterday, waters off, yeah. rethink poverty simulation, and rush line workshop. Woo! There we go. That's just a highlight of what I did. But what I, one announcement that I want to make is another great opportunity, and that is um, I am part of Greater MSP, the executive board, and, they, and Greater MSP is putting together a grant application to the U.S. Economic Development Administration. It provides three-year grants of up to $750,000 and um, really feel like we're in a good position right now to officially launch the Forge North as a strategic initiative of the partnership. And so I will be signing a letter in support of that as it goes in and we would be the first Minnesota organization to receive this grant and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Good, thank you. Commissioner Ortega. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to take this moment to uh, remember Gary Davis. Mm. He passed yeah, away thank you. this weekend. Uh, he served Ramsey County for 41 years. I've had the pleasure to work with him since I first got here. But he was our legal, our lawyer for uh, human services for all those years. And uh, he was the, uh, the person that was the lead that purchased the land and um, facilitated the building of uh, Ramsey Hospital that now has become Regents Hospital. So uh, uh, he's left us with a big legacy, 41 years serving Ramsey County. He passed away uh, uh, following heart surgery. Uh, so I just wanted to call, call out his name because he was a good friend for the county. Yeah, thank you for that. Commissioner McGuire. Okay. I um, you got the floor. I know, you got the I, floor. I, know, I do. I, I just have to give um, a shout out to the the We Count. Uh, was a great uh, uh, kickoff for the county of this, the census yesterday. It was a wonderful coalition. Uh, Rethink poverty. Oh my gosh! It was a simulation that. Uh, uh, Commissioner Mendes Castillo, Commissioner Reinhardt and I went to in Roseville. It was amazing. If anyone gets a chance to do a poverty simulation, it was super powerful and really talked about all the things that contribute to poverty and how what we can, uh, how we can think about it. So that was really wonderful. And then um, just have to say, give a shout out to Carrie Collins, who met with uh, Commissioner Carter and I and Alice Houseman on the whole economic development. Uh, our workshop, we presented that. Alice was very impressed. Uh, Representative Houseman was very impre impressed with our economic, you know, development moving forward. And because she chairs housing, we looked at intersections that we could make with that. So I just uh, want to give a shout out to Carrie Collins. And Thank you. Commissioner Rick, I, I do want to bring up, because you were talking about transit and transportation. Yeah. The common theme in this poverty simulation oh, was right. transportation yes. and being able to yes. get to yes. locations where you can access help. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I just... It reinforces how much transit and transportation options mm -hmm. are holding people back that are in poverty. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Carter. So I'll try to talk as fast as I can, and this will be one run-on sentence. All you have the floor, Commissioner <laughs> Carter. You do it. <laughs> so I would very, very much like to call out uh, Ryan O'Connor's leadership in having cemented a partnership with Wilder and the Promise Neighborhood that resulted in the People's Fellowship attending the People's Fellowship graduation this past week. I was just very, very much pleased and proud of the work that we are doing in partnership with the fellowship that has graduated now a number of individuals who've had the opportunity to focus on health, to focus on their children, to focus on their preparation for employment, and to engage in uh, citizenship 
along with the Promise Neighborhood leadership. So thank you to Ryan who actually cemented that partnership and to the continuing health and wellness leadership in engaging that partnership toward this first cohort graduation last week that I attended with Ling Becker, mm -hmm. <laughs> our Workforce Solutions Director. Also attended uh, a wire cutting along University Avenue. I just have to say that this is a fantastic company, Tech Dump, that employs 35 oh, yes. people that relocated from the western suburbs to right along University Avenue on Vandalia. And we are celebrating them as well as Mentoring Young Adults, which opened a new office on Rice Street inside the Women's Consortium building still, but now with office space, conference space, staff, and training space that will uh, benefit young people for many years to come. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm gonna take a, well done, to all of my colleagues here, well done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a moment to recover. There's always the danger when you start calling all folks for work and you miss, but I wanted to go back to Rice Creek Commons real quick. I wanna do another adamant to our county manager who's provided a lot of guidance here as we move forward. Recognize John Sviglin and the communication team. They have just done a stellar job here in, in helping portray and communicate um, where we're at. And then also recognizing Sarah Thatcher, who at one time was the interim and actually worked for us. But for ever since we got to see Sarah's uh, um, work by being our interim, we've utilized her on a number of projects, and she's been our pace and um, been a part of the team here. So um, with that, I just wanted to catch up and recover from that. We will be moving into a Housing Redevelopment Authority meeting that will be chaired by uh, Vice Chair uh, Trista Mattis Castile. Then we're gonna go into an executive session for the Ramsey County Regional Rail Authority that um, Commissioner Ortega will chair. And then at 10.30, our goal is to move into the County Board Workshop, Ramsey County Workforce Statist Statistics Report. I think we're gonna see some gaps, but we're gonna see some really good results that are coming out of that. And then at 12 o'clock, we have our annual luncheon with the uh, Building Owners and Man Managers Association of St. Paul to talk about shared interest in moving forward over the next year. Thank you. We're adjourned.